Uh, welcome to another web design and development video uh, where I'll show you how to make modern websites using uh, HTML, CSS, and usually just a little basic JavaScript. I'm going to uh, diverge a little bit uh, in this video. I've been working with uh, Webflow and this is the Webflow website here. Uh, Webflow is an online uh, HTML visual code editor so it's kinda hard to explain so that's why I'm gonna do this demo video uh, actually it's probably just gonna be a series of demos and uh, what I'm gonna do is this is like a perfect little marketing website and this is not something I've purchased I'm just looking at it and for the for the sake of uh, just recreating it uh, we're just gonna recreate it in Webflow um, we'll have to see about the animation maybe that's something toward the end that it could put in there <clears throat> but just want to show you how Webflow works and what it is and what it is not. Uh, it was not clear to me before last week what Webflow is. And so I've heard about it for a couple of years. Um, Travis Nielsen over at, at the DevTips channel uh, demoed it a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a, a man, his name is uh, Ron or Ran. He is in Israel. And he uses it almost exclusively for his. Uh, clients and for his business and um, it seems like a really great option uh, because it includes a CMS sort of structure uh, that allows you to do uh, things like testimonials and uh, team member uh, sorts of things where the client can actually add uh, or take away or hide um, different sorts of posts or different sorts of um, <clears throat> in WordPress we would call them custom post types so you kinda have custom post types that you build with a little small database but it's all done uh, as an HTML website there's no back-end actual database uh, that you're using so uh, it's a very interesting technology I'm into Jamstack so JavaScript markup and uh, what's the A? I don't remember what the A is. It's not Angular, but <laughs> um, oh, APIs. So JavaScript, A APIs, and markup, and that's kind of the f the new front end uh, stack, um, as opposed to doing some middleware sort of things in between the server. Uh, you just connect to the server and the data through an API call. Uh, so that's kind of the new order of things, uh, the way that web design seems to be going, at least on the smaller scale. And so <clears throat> that's kind of what I'm interested in. And this tool uh, fits in perfectly with that. So you can add JavaScript. Uh, it's super easy to add animations and uh, based on lots of different types of em events. And you can also layer animations too. So uh, let's get right into it. We log in. Already have a uh, already have a login for this. So. Once you log in, you come to your dashboard. Uh, I have a couple of different things that I was trying to do, and this is one. Well, this is one that I'd created. Let me see. Um, this is kind of a, f a photo portfolio that I created while I was learning uh, some of the different concepts. Um, I have an extra this grid. can be deleted, this section can be deleted. Okay, and then when you look at it in the preview mode, this is it in the preview mode, all of these images are being brought in through that CMS type system. So I've just uploaded each of them as posts. Um, got a little fixed element down here that just kind of stays down here. But when you click on these, then you go to the actual uh, kind of the image page uh, where you would have a little bit of writing or whatever about it. This is a category that's a part of the post itself. And this is set up like a post page. Um, I don't know necessarily how to explain it uh, best. But you can have a group of posts. So you can filter 
the collection based on uh, the categories and um, and then again when you click on this it goes to a page uh, which is built kind of pre-built like a template uh, in order to show um, all the information that you put in in your collection so here's my collection of gallery images so when I click on one you can see that there's the ability to change the image or to replace or delete it uh, you can give a name to your post um, I can select a category so I have a few different categories here uh, that each one is in and then this is the part where you would kind of tell the story um, and then it keeps obviously it keeps track of who has published it last you can duplicate and archive things uh, you can make them uh, you can save them as a draft so that just like in WordPress when you save a post as a draft it takes it out of uh, the production side and allows you to work on it without anyone seeing it <coughs> and uh, so the what they call this the Webflow CMS and so each of these uh, images that I've <coughs> put in here I've just uploaded them and I put a little bit of, of story in there I've given each one a name and you can see that they each have uh, their own unique URL which you can change so it's it's if you worked with WordPress it's a lot like that um, and you can see just kind of a high level view here um, this is what category they're in which you know I've already kind of included those things uh, as I was making the posts <coughs> and then once you come into the back end uh, you're just these are also being brought in through that system that collection system so you essentially have a collection list um, and then inside that list you can make choices as to uh, you know what database that you're connecting to you know how you want that to be laid out um, do you want them to be full width you know you can there's a lot of different uh, little variations here that you can do and then each of these elements here is <coughs> um, it's it's the same so if I were to change uh, one of these elements here as far as the title it would change all of them because they're all connected like a template so they're all being connected together so it's a, a an interesting program uh, if you look at the full web, oh, that wasn't what I wanted to do. So let's publish it. And if you look at the live website here, you can see some uh, animations. Let's see if it'll get to it. Yeah. Okay. So you can see that all that information is being pulled in here to its unique page and when I roll over I've created some just basic little animations the animations were all created using drag and drop inside of work uh, webflow um, and then when you click on one it goes to that that particular photos uh, unique page it pulls in more images uh, you can decide how to filter these images it can be based on this um, category here you could show all all other portrait images or you could show uh, everything but that same category so you could just do kind of related uh, images that type of thing but you can see that it just it creates a unique page for each um, CMS collection item <clears throat> and then you go into that like general template page for all the collection items and you decide what it's going to look like uh, using you know just normal you know I'm just putting in an H2 or whatever it is and then I'm connecting it to that collection and then each time we get to one of these collection pages for that collection it just inserts the uh, the title of the collection item that we made uh, in the back end so it works a lot like you would normally expect a blog or you would expect a CMS to work and um, one of the really awesome parts about this actually just go back one of the awesome parts about Webflow is that if you just do um, a question mark and edit it brings up the Webflow editor maybe yeah so it brings up an editor and you can actually log in and 
Let's see if it'll allow me to do that. <clears throat> oh, you have to add someone as a collaborator. But if you do uh, add them in, then they log in, and then they are actually going to be able to make changes. So if you allow collection items to be changed, they could actually go in and uh, make changes to collection items. Uh, they can make new posts. They can archive things. They can edit things. So they can do the the client or whoever else is working with you can do that all in the front end um, of the website just by logging in. And then kind of like you do in, in uh, WordPress where you have the live editor and you roll over something and it has a little edit icon. It's similar to that. So if something is editable, then you can roll over it and you'll be able to click on that and change that live in the browser and then that's affected on the back end so that the next time the browser is refreshed or when everyone sees it and goes to the website then they can see your changes so uh, it's a really uh, kind of sophisticated uh, piece of software this is not just drag and drop and I'm going to show you that in the next video just sort of how it works um, this has been kind of an overview of what Webflow is, what can do, and like I said, we're going to try to create this or recreate this and see if we can do that uh, pretty easily. Uh, so video number two, uh, we're just going to get right into the code and building this header area here. Um, so make sure that you go on to that. If you want to sign up for Webflow, you can go to webflow.com and you can sign up. Uh, it's totally free to sign up and be able to create one or two pages. Um, you can see here that I've created a couple of pages and then there's some utility pages and then the template so any collections you add um, there's a template. Uh, if you wanted to do a full website you would need to add uh, some sort of hosting or buy upgrade a different package uh, for Webflow. So. Um, Thanks for watching and come back for uh, video number two and I'll see you next time.